welcome back to Open Your Eyes, venturing off now into our third and final segment for the morning. It is another beautiful day in San Antonio. San Antonio Day coming up. Yes. <laughs> and it's going to be, uh, it says here, June 18th, 9 to 5. June 16th. June 16th. Oh, so let's get that right. So June 16th, and they're actually connecting nature, sports, and agriculture. In with us to tell us more is Delmer Zim, who is an organizer of San Antonio Day Committee. Good morning. Bishabel. 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 <laughs> Your answer is supposed to be Malokin. Okay. Malok, Malokin. 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 I am Malokin. Good. All right. Ah, cool. Yes. That way, that's cool. That's a great <laughs> way to start. Okay. Unfortunately for me, that's the only two <laughs> sentences I know. Oh my God. You didn't have to say that. You had us all fooled. But, Delmer, thank you for coming in. Thank and you, thank clearly, you. Uh, we're, we're going to be touching on reigniting uh, culture in San Antonio yes, and yes. you know let, let's just start off with the cultural significance of San Antonio itself well San Antonio well I, I'm sure most of you are aware of the caste war and the impact it had on the leads San Antonio is a community is an offshoot of that war itself people migrated through Guatemala and parts of Mexico to reach into San Antonio itself Wow the people went into the mountain Pine Ridge area in an area called little Vaquerito and privation and then they eventually migrated into what is today san antonio they mm. settled there in particular um, because of its agricultural production mm -hmm. and a fertile soil and also um water the access to water the maya name to san antonio is oshmultun kakab mm -hmm. meaning three little mounds so if you go Osh into the com Multun. Osh Osh Multun kakab. Osh tree multun little hills kakab kakab okay. Osh Multun kakab eventually because of um, religious um, the Catholic started to come in, they renamed the village San Antonio. Oh. Mm -hmm. But the Maya name is Oshmultun Kakab. Oshmultun Kakab. San Antonio Cayo. Let's get San it San Antonio Cayo, yes, San clear, clear, clear. clear. San yes, yes. So, all right. It's Cayo. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about Yucatec Maya. Yucatec Maya, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So talk, you know, you, you understand the cultural significance of the village and, and quite a number of villages in this country. Um, I think we aren't aware collectively of, of their cultural roots. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming this is an opportunity to kind of reignite that spirit back in the community. Well, unfortunately, eight years ago, we had a, we had a, a day to celebrate. Um, back then it was a saint, but today what we're doing is we're celebrating our culture and yeah. celebrating ourselves, trying to ignite um, cultural identity. Um, eight years ago it stopped. Last year we started with this movement yeah. and the movement itself is basically to bring back identity to the people. As I said when I started, one of the reasons that this is happening is because of me. Mm -hmm. Because I've lived all my life in San Antonio. My father is a Maya man. Um, his grandfather came from, from Yucatan as well. But I only know two sentences in Maya and unfortunately that is the reality in, in our village and, and in our villages in the Cayo district. We're mm -hmm. losing our language. We're losing our traditions, we're losing our culture. Mm. So what we're doing through this is to try to reignite um, pride in saying, look, I am Maya, um, I want to dress this way, I want to talk this way, I'm not ashamed of talking my language, mm. and um, promoting San Antonio itself as a community as well. Mm -hmm. So the event has three aims, as you see, yeah. um, nature, sports, agriculture. Mm. But the second aspect of agriculture comes with agri, a dash and culture. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that is because San Antonio is an agriculturalist community and part of our culture stems from farming lifestyles mm -hmm. and as you know as well um, San Antonio prides right now of hosting the farmer of the year. Yes. Daniel Lopez is from San Antonio uh -huh. and in the previous year it was Gary Canto from San Antonio. From San Antonio. The junior um, farmer of 2015 was Dean Sim from San Antonio. Yes. So San Antonio is, is one of the bastions of agriculture in our, in our um, country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, you know what, Delmar, for me, uh, I, I, I hear you. you. You gave us two sentences, uh, and then <laughs> yourself mentioning that you were you born and grew right there yes. in San Antonio, which is, of course, a Maya village. Maya village, yes. And you're not able to speak the language. Why do you think this is? Well, the stories that are passed down is that, um, one, the parents, in the case of my, of my father, he was beaten when he was speaking Maya because um, the, his parents were trying to groom him into surviving in this society. Mm. So they were trying wow. to, to make him talk English and Spanish and not Maya. So over the years and over generations, um, it was lost. Yes, we have a group of people that can speak it quite fluently, yeah. but unfortunately, our younger generations are not seeing the value of it. And it is being lost, particularly by the younger generations. We are, trying to, we are assimilating into this society, mm -hmm. which, is, which is fine. 
but we also want to keep part of who we are, which is the language yeah. in this multicultural society that is Belize. Yeah. Delmar, I, I find it so encouraging if we are to look just in the past few years at what seems to be a move towards re-establishing the presence of the Yucatec Mayan and the Mayan culture, culture in general um, through different activities, Miss Canola and the Pop the Pock. Um, mm -hmm. I know you you were uh, you and your colleagues at SJC worked through your African and Mayan history program, and here we have one of the celebrations within a community itself. What do you think was the spark that we went from kind of just a generalized Mayans in North, West, and, and South um, to a recognition that there had to be more to reestablish the identity? Well, the spark, in, I can speak of the spark of the West. Um, for years, we've been noticing what the NERT is, is doing. I mean, the NERT has been very active, as yeah. you say, Ms. Felicita Cantun yeah. and, and her group. But also, one of the things that I, from my, through my years at the University of Belize, <coughs> is that I was exposed to what was happening in the NERT. In the NERT, they have festivities and have yeah. dancing groups from all over, competitions yeah. with dancing groups. And I look back at, at my area in the West and we're like, okay, we don't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in a way, they sparked us to say we need to do something yeah, about yeah. what we're, uh, about our culture as well. So what we're doing is basically um, we're bringing parts of the nerd to the west because yes. we have connections with Felicita Cantun. They are going to be performing at the day in San Antonio. That's our w world champions. Pop the pop team. Yes, we we plan to big them up, and um, you know it's one of the signature events for the event itself, yes. trying to promote our Mayanness. So they're going to be performing there. Um, we also have another group called um, Hatsuts Okot meaning beautiful dance. Mm -hmm. They're coming from Shaibe, mm -hmm. coming to perform to in a day in San Antonio as well. Yeah. And we have a dancing group from San Narciso. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get some of the traditional dances right down to the West yeah. and yeah. to see, try to see how we can reignite some of our traditions as well. Yeah. But we also have um, the San Antonio Roman Catholic School from San Antonio mm -hmm. doing some performances as well. So in a way, we're already sparking parts of it because yes, they, yes. They, they got influenced by this and they're now going to perform. But the village itself, the West, what is different between the North and the West is that um, we dance something called La Chatona. Mm -hmm. Now, La Chatona is, is basically a big mannequin that is dancing all over around. That this one. is La Chatona. <laughs> so it's just a, a person basically gets into the mannequin and they dance marimba and mm -hmm. men would come and dance with, with, with La Chatona. Mm -hmm. But it has origins in Guatemala. That's why it's only in the West. Yes. So ah. La Chatona basically comes from a woman called La Doña Petrona. Uh -huh. And... Um, she was a chicle, a, a person that was working in the chicle industry and mm. would go into the wilderness to work and cook. And it so happens that in November, when their season was over, it matched with a festivity in San Andres Petén, and it would be a big fair. Mm. And she would be the one to hype it up, dancing over and just pulling everybody to come and dance. Unfortunately, when she died, the, the, the village, well, fortunately, I would say, the village um, felt so sad about it that they decided to make a mannequin in her honor. Mm. Uh. And then this tradition eventually spread throughout Guatemala, the, the Petén area, and it came into Belize too, okay. yeah. parts okay. of the West, yeah. because, I mean, it, it's Maya as well. Yeah. Yes. And then we also have another um, traditional dance, which is signature of any Maya event that you have in Belize, which is the hoghead dance. Mm -hmm. Oh. But the hog head dance itself has a lot of significance as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is about dancing around with a hog head. It's a hog head in there mm -hmm. and with bread and all of these things. But basically what is being done is that you would go from house to house traditionally, house to house dancing this particular um, dance. Mm -hmm. And whoever stays with the head is responsible for hosting a party. Wow. So it's all about sharing. It's, it's the same thing oh, with I the... I didn't it, know that one. These are all things that in a way are happening. Yeah but are a way of uniting people. Yes. Well, I was going to ask, how many, I mean, these traditions that you speak of, how vibrant are they still in the community? Well, we're bringing it back. That's, yeah. it. That, that, that's the thing. It, like it, you it's think it's the younger kids, they know about the hog head dance or, you know, the mannequin or are they aware? Well, what we're, they're aware that we practice it, but they're not aware of its significance. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like for instance, for me, until I was doing some research, I was aware that we did this. I, I grew up following the, the hog head dance throughout the streets, mm -hmm. but I had no, no um, consciousness of why it's so important and why it was so important for the Maya back then. Yeah. 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 And through this, through this event actually, we're planning to educate people about its significance yeah. as well. So it's not only about entertainment, it's not only about coming out and seeing Pok the Pok, seeing um, the dances, but we also share information and at the in San Antonio um, also promotes education. Yeah. So we have um, 
the Pakbetun Archaeological Research Project doing presentations there. We have the Rio Free Archaeological Research Project doing presentations. The El Pilar, um, Botan the, not Botanical Gardens, sorry, Forest Gardens, mm -hmm. they're doing presentations there as, as well. So th we're trying to incorporate all aspects of how our Mayanese is portrayed today. Yeah. yeah. So these are archaeologists coming to research about what our ancestors left, but this is what they're presenting to the people. Okay. Yeah. So we want to make a connection between what is being researched, what our people think, and what our people see of themselves, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And the sports? Well, the sports part, that's a very significant part as mm -hmm. well. Um, we have a bicycle race, which is called the Dr. Don Eligio Panti bicycle uh -huh. race. Last year we, have a, we had Keon Robatu being the winner, the first winner of the first ever Dr. Don Eligio Panti. Okay. But Dr. Don Eligio Panti, I, am, I hope you guys are aware of who he is. Uh -huh. Are you guys aware of who he Go is? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, us, tell us about him. Dr. Don Eligio Panti is one of the world-renowned doctors. Actually, the queen came to see him when she was sick. Wow. A lot of people tend to talk, uh, talk about him as a bush doctor. I don't consider him a bush doctor. Because if he was a bush doctor, then why did all of these big companies come to see him? See him yeah. And not only see him, but look at what he was doing to get medicinal recipes to take back. Uh -huh. yeah. So this guy is very significant in the region, not only San Antonio. Because he placed Belize on the map. Mm -hmm. He died in 1996. And on a, on a monthly basis, up to 3,000 patients on a from monthly basis all over Central America. Wow. Wow. So he became so prominent and to honor him. And it was all natural medicine. All natural medicine. All yeah. natural medicine. So he, he had a, a vast knowledge of all of the medicinal plants and mm -hmm. how he could use it. He was always reinventing and inventing mm -hmm. new potions yeah. to see how he could help people. Is there anybody in the village who is actually carrying on his legacy and doing his work? There are a couple of individuals yeah. who, are, who are trying to keep it alive, but as I said, we need a lot of more yeah. um, support as well. Um, but we honor him to that bicycle race. Mm -hmm. So we have a bicycle race that is 54 miles. Mm -hmm. um, and just as San Antonio Day, it's not only about a race itself, it also brings a lot of significance to it. Um, 54 miles, it's from San Antonio to Cristo Rey. Mm -hmm. Four laps, um, the villagers get to see the riders. But also, the trophies are not the trophies of metal or plastic that we usually oh, that's see. Cool. Our trophies are handmade. Um, we have the San Antonio Women's Group, um, who are very crafty. They do um, a lot of um, hands-on mm -hmm. work, and they are the ones supporting us with the trophy with the trophies itself. So some of these trophies may be valued to up to five hundred dollars Belize because of the of the time it takes to to do this particular to craft work. Craft one of them, yes. Yeah. So we have an elite category and a junior category. Um, the first prize is 600, second prize is 500, third prize is 400 for elites, and the junior college, is, uh, junior college, no, junior category <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is um, 300, 200, and 100. Those are good yeah. prizes. I also see you have a huge amount of sponsors who are supporting you. Yes, we have a lot of um, resorts, but we have a lot of resorts, businesses supporting us, but also we have a lot of the community members. You have awesome. just people that are just coming and saying, you know what, I like what you guys are doing. You can have a $50, $100. And that to me is a, it, it shows a lot. Of yeah. course. Because it, it's, it touches your heart when you see people saying, out of my own pocket, I want to give you because I see that it's positive. After yeah. last year's event, um, what's been the most encouraging thing that's come out of that? Well, the most encouraging thing, um, I must say the response of the people. Mm -hmm. The people were extremely happy at the Look end at of that the crowd. Um, yes, at the crowd. that's what I was watching. Yes, we had about. I mean, um, Green Sapol entertaining, but yeah. that's a <laughs> lot of people. <laughs> yes, and um, the, the 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 best response we had is from the people. They're happy about it. Mm -hmm. They feel like we're putting San Antonio on the map. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure how often you get to discuss San Antonio in, the, in this show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 no. So, um, and another aspect of of this um, particular day is that it is educational. So we also have a model competition going on. So the primary schools around San Antonio are asked to participate in this particular event. And um, this day what we're doing is that we are promoting the Maya Milpa cycle. So for many years we've been told that the Maya were not sustainable with their mm -hmm. traditional Milpa cycles or their, their practices, farming practices. Mm -hmm. But we've been finding out that what they had is that they had a cycle of crop rotation that took years that at the beginning people could not understand. So they would not simply extensively use a particular um, land for 20, 30 years. They would use it for 10 years and then leave it to overgrow, leave it to 
trees came out again and they would use another area mm -hmm. and then probably over 60 70 years after they would come back to that same plot of land so it is a cycle that they that they're using yeah, yeah where they're using also fruit trees and all of these things. So the students around the community are um, doing models ab ab about it and it's a model competition. Mm -hmm. So again, it's $200, $150 and $100 for the winners. And Individual students or like no, groups or it's, schools? It's groups, it, it's the schools. The schools decide okay. who they want to send. They okay. have an internal basically yeah. um, Selection. elimination and then they send their two yeah. two models per school and then we have judges coming in to wow. judge that so okay. that's a whole lot in yeah. one day yes. <laughs> so you got a race you have all the cultural presentations yes. you uh you have your education presentations mm -hmm. as well i'm assuming boots are also set boots up so people will be can up there yes we have boots we'll have um, the belize botanical garden is this touching that's what i'm trying to yes, figure out is they that have, touching um, competition it's palm leaf breeding okay wow. so that that's one of the competitions we we also have um corn shelling competition what? we have corn grinding competition you and this year the the corn grinding will be um, one of the signature events because it will be done with the traditional mano and metate in the West, which is which is not the usual. Mano and metate. Yes. I don't yes. know what that is. The metate is the is basically like a stone like. I yes. know, like what you do. And the then the mano, yeah, yeah. Manu and then the mano. So they would have to do it manually. Manually right. grind. Yes. The that oh. is hard. <laughs> it is hard, but I mean, we, we, we're promoting it. Yeah. We're trying to, as I said, we're trying to bring back. Yeah. And then one of the other signature events is peanut shelling. Now yeah. some of you might say, why peanut yeah. shelling? Yeah. Is that the same matter? Yeah. Everybody just do it so <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but San Antonio is known as the capital of peanuts in the country of Belize. Really? I did not yes. know that. I didn't know yeah. um, so that. This sounds like a great trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So San Antonio um, is for a long time, or has for a long time been producing peanuts. And most of the peanuts that you consume in the markets and in San Belize Antonio. City, in Belmopan, and in San, in San Ignacio yeah. are from San Antonio. San Antonio. So one of the things that we that we're doing is that we're doing peanut shelling as one of the competitions to promote it as well, mm -hmm. nice. because it's part of our identity as San Antonio. Yeah. Um, in the years before, they also had a sheller machine, which would be used. It's again made out of um, wood, mm -hmm. but today we're trying to promote it to yeah. the, to, to their hands. Yeah. Oh, okay. So That's a better. You know, more entertaining competition. Yeah, it's, it's more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you got maple, maple too, plotting the maple. Yes, well, the Hatsut um, Okot dancing group will be mm -hmm. doing um, five different presentations, dances from the from the north, bringing yeah. it to the west, La Harana. Um, we'll have the maple dance, which is known in Spanish as La Cinta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll also have El Torito, which also has another story to it with... Um, with um, bulls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then another dance called konesh konesh i'm not too aware of the of the significance of that one and that's why i say this yeah. is a process <laughs> of learning yeah. 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 It's, it's i mean everything you said so far has been a process <laughs> of learning <laughs> and then um, we'll also have marimba yeah. the marimba it's a signature thing we can't yeah. have a maya event without marimba there oh. yeah. so we're going to have a traditional marimba group in, in the morning playing throughout the morning but in the evening, mm -hmm. we're going to also, we're conscious of the, of the transition that is happening in our culture. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have Los Hijos del West. Ooh, what? I love I that. Was I waiting love that. Yeah. They are good. They are yes. the superstar group coming yes. out uh, from the West right from now. The West, and, and they are great. Yeah. And they're young. Yeah. Very young. Yeah. Very young. So we're trying to promote also the, the, the musical aspect of our culture. So Los Hijos del West will be playing in the evening. Yeah. Hopefully some of our elders come out and just nice. dance, dance away to some nice. of the music. Yeah. Um, but again, we do not see many of, of our villagers practicing marimba yeah. playing, and it's mm -hmm. a it's a something unique to the Maya as well, yeah. and it's something that they can practice in our in a, in our society. Definitely. And it's a daytime event, nine to five. It's a daytime event. It's nine to five. Actually, it, it's now nine to six because of Los Hijos del West. You know, we decided to extend it. To, we were just going to have Los Hijos del West for an hour, but then um, the committee members are saying, look. Let's just end it with a blast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's yeah. just have people enjoy it. Yeah. So we're deci we decided to just um, yeah. let them play until 6, 6.30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So they're going to be playing for our villagers to, to enjoy the music and yeah. also entertain themselves. So no big song system, no this everything traditional. We will have a, I mean, it, it, it's an event. And as I said, we're yes. going in a transition. Right, so right. we, we do, we, we will need, a, we will have a, a sound system, but all the music, the theme, everything is traditional. Traditional. So okay. everything has to do with traditional events, right? But um, as part of this um, event as well, we also had a football marathon mm -hmm. 
last week we had a football marathon where um, we also honor another person from the village, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Enrique Palencia, who mm -hmm. is still alive, but who has been promoting football for many years, yeah. over, over the past 20, 30 years. So we decided to establish or have a marathon f in his honor, okay. and it's called the Donwichins Marathon. This year, Crystal Ray won it. Um, again, good prizes, but what we're doing is that even though we're promoting entertainment, we're also promoting an idea. So the idea is to connect back to what it means to be or to live in San Antonio mm -hmm. and also promote it to the other communities around. Yeah. Yes. Cool. All right. So all roads lead to San Antonio this weekend. Yes. Sunday. All right. It's Sunday, yes. <laughs> well, of course, another aspect of it is the food. You I cannot forget the food. You know? All right. What can we expect? Well, Very quickly. We have... Um, Salado, which is a, are you guys aware of what is salado? No, no I don't know what salado. So salado is basically smoked meat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It would be pork or beef. They would salt it for some days and then smoke it for hours six it. hours. Yeah. And then the meat would stay very, very soft and juicy. Mm. Uh -huh. And then we will, we will have that to showcase here. I mean, people will be selling as well. We'll mm -hmm. have pibil, the traditional foods, boyos, tamales. And something that struck me last year, because <laughs> last year we did an event. I mean, we, we had food out there, mm -hmm. but I was not aware that a particular, a particular family brought out a hute soup. I'm not sure hute if you guys I know hute snail. 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 Yeah. Yeah. snail. Some black So they snail. brought out a snail <laughs> soup. I remember uh -huh. hute. I, I was not aware that they were selling it. And this year, one of, uh, one of the, the guests that, that came in was like, I am going for that soup. Will you have that soup? Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. so, the, so the person is having a soup. But um, what... Some of us are not aware of is that the Maya used to consume hute a lot. In fact, the yeah. reason, one of the reasons that is being projected as to why they have the zero as a shell is because of a hute shell, yes. a snail shell. On mm. doing many of the excavations <laughs> yeah. in many of the archaeological sites, you would yeah. notice that especially in the late um, classic period, mm -hmm. they would be consuming a lot of hute mm -hmm. because their food sources were depleting, so yeah. they were eating a lot of snails. Mm -hmm. And um, that is something that has also continued. I did not know it was still continuing. <laughs> so <laughs> what you're saying is you're a big fan of the hute soup. Yes. I, well, <laughs> let me say, uh -huh, I am a uh -huh. big fan because I want to taste it. <laughs> because you guys haven't tasted <laughs> it. So. I can tell by your reaction. But it is, you know, I mean, kudos to you and to the organizing committee for putting together something uh, so entrenched in culture, but also so appealing in terms of uh, wanting to, to entertain and learn more yeah. throughout the course of one day. Right? Yes, well, well, it's not. I am just representing the group yeah. here. You know, yeah. but we have yeah. about thirteen persons doing yeah. the real work out there. Yeah. 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 So they are the ones doing all the organization. Um, and again, I must highlight the community and the sponsors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the community itself is excited. This weekend, we're all about celebrating our community, our Mayanes, our mm -hmm. identity, yeah. and San Antonio. In the in the football the football field, I, I would I would guess. Oh, th this event is happening at the center of the community. Mm -hmm. So it is, in a way, a small area, but the reason why we're doing it is because it's a one-day event, and we're trying to link Elihio Pante, we're trying to link the Hoghead Dance, the Greasy Pole, the cultural Chatona. presentations, mm -hmm. the food. So everything is in one location. So you can go at one location, enjoy the bicycle race, you can go at that same location, and as the bicycle race passes, because remember, it's four laps, yeah. you can turn around and watch the, the Hoghead Dance or watch whatever other presentation uh -huh. is happening. So it's, it's all about promoting our culture as well. And also we are going to have our farmers out there. That's another important as well. Of course, agriculture. <laughs> we're That's going to have our a whole lot in one day. <laughs> one day. Yeah. In we're year. trying to showcase everything that San Antonio has. Yeah. And um, we, are, we, we have a lot of aspects to our village, yeah. and our community. Yeah. And um, we also have one of the honey farmers out there. Oh, okay. So honey is one of the things that is also yeah. coming out of San Antonio. Um, uh, one of the farmers came out and said, you know what, I want to promote my honey. I want to see people to see yeah. how this is done yes. and, and that sort of thing. We also have people showcasing how we do the, the um, peanut roasting mm. and all of that. So my it's gosh. going to be an experience. <laughs> 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 the are going longer and longer. Yeah. But you know what, I think it's a wonderful initiative and we really hope, I mean, it's not just for people from San Antonio. It's for people across yes. the country to come and learn something new. Yes. Thank you for coming in, Delmar, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you for it. All right, we're going right. to go ahead and take that final break now, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned.